الدين الحريري رئيسا لمجلس الوزراء Good afternoon, you're watching the English newscast here on Future Television. I'm Linda Tamim and these are today's headlines. President Michel Aoun signs a decree to open an extraordinary parliamentary cycle to discuss urgent draft laws, including the country's budget. Grand Mufti Sheikh Abdel Latif Darian says he has high expectations on the planned visit of President Michel Aoun to Saudi Arabia, saying it will improve ties between the two countries. And at least 43 people are reported killed after a car bomb struck Syria's northwestern city of Azaz. President Michel Aoun has signed a decree to open an extraordinary parliamentary cycle to discuss urgent draft laws, including the country's budget. A statement issued by Aoun's press office said the parliament will meet from January 7th until March 20th, and his decision to hold the sessions was based on an agreement with Prime Minister Saad Hariri. The decree highlighted the Parliament's agenda during the extraordinary sessions, which will include studying all proposed electoral draft laws, bills pertaining to the country's budget, all draft laws that have been referred to the Parliament, and those that will be referred to the Cabinet within this period. Lebanon has not approved a state budget since 2005 due to political wrangling among the rival factions. MP Alaeddin Borujerdi, a senior Iranian lawmaker, has met with prominent Lebanese figures as part of a two-day trip to the country. Borujerdi met with President Michel Aoun at Babda Palace at the head of an Iranian delegation. He conveyed a message from, for Aoun from Iranian President Hassan Rouhani and Iranian Parliament Speaker Ali Larijani, who voiced their intentions to boost bilateral ties between the two countries. Borujerdi and Aoun also discussed their regional situation, particularly the crisis in Syria, as well as efforts to reach a political solution to the neighboring conflict based on dialogue. Speaking after a meeting with Parliament Speaker Nabih Berri, the Iranian MP said they both share the same viewpoints regarding the battle against terrorism, highlighting the necessity for a comprehensive dialogue to end the war in Syria. A statement issued by Hezbollah's press office said Borujerdi also met with the group's leader, Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah. The meeting reportedly focused on the recent political developments in the region. He was also expected to meet with Prime Minister Saad Hariri later in the day. Chinese Deputy Foreign Minister Zhang Ming has expressed his country's support for Lebanon, urging authorities to fortify ties between the two nations. Ming praised the efforts of Lebanese authorities to maintain the country's sovereignty, saying his country sought to assist Lebanon in preserving its independence. Zhang's remarks were made during a meeting with President Michel Aoun at Babda Palace, where he conveyed a message from Chinese President Xi Jinping to Aoun, expressing the Chinese government's determination to strengthen bilateral relations with Lebanon. The Chinese diplomat also met with Prime Minister Saad Hariri on Friday, the meeting focused on means to boost bilateral relations as well as regional and international issues. Grand Mufti Sheikh Abdul Latif Darian says he has high expectations on the planned visit of President Michel Aoun to Saudi Arabia, saying it will improve ties between the two countries. Darian spoke before he took off to Saudi Arabia for a 10-day visit. Aoun will visit Saudi, and Saudi Arabia and Qatar next week in his first foreign trip abroad to discuss bilateral relations between the countries in addition to the situation in the region. At least 43 people report, were reported killed after a car bomb struck Syria's northwestern city of Azaz. Dozens were also wounded in today's attack, which took place near a busy market and in front of a courthouse in the rebel-held town along Turkey's border. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says those killed included six opposition fighters, and the explosion was caused by a rigged water or fuel tanker. Coming up next, the U.S. Army veteran is arrested over the Fort Lauderdale airport shooting. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching the English newscast here on Future Television. Heavy gunfire erupted early near the main military camp in Ivory Coast's second largest city of Boaké, where disgruntled soldiers launched an uprising a day earlier over salaries and bonuses. 
The renegade soldiers have controlled the city of around half a million residents since taking up positions at key entry points early on Friday. A U.S. Army veteran who complained that the government was controlling his mind drew a gun from his checked luggage upon arrival at the Fort Lauderdale airport and opened fire in the, the baggage claim area on Friday, killing five people and wounding eight. The gunman was identified as 26-year-old Esteban Santiago of Anchorage, Alaska, who served in Iraq but was demoted and discharged last year for unsatisfactory performance. His brother said he had been receiving psychological treatment. Authorities said the motive for the attack was under investigation. U.S. President Barack Obama gave what was expected to be his second-to-last web radio address as president, where he gave a brief glimpse into some of the points he'll touch on during his farewell address on Tuesday. Obama will be speaking in his hometown of Chicago, Illinois, the state where he served as U.S. Senator. Since the days of George Washington, presidents have delivered some form of final message while in office. A farewell address to the American people. On Tuesday night in Chicago, I'll deliver mine. I chose Chicago not only because it's my hometown, where I met my wife and we started a family, but also because it's really where my career in public service began. The running thread through my career has been the notion that when ordinary people get involved and get engaged, and come together in collective effort, things change for the better. That's the belief at the heart of this precious American experiment in self-government. It's what gives work and purpose to each new generation. It's easy to lose sight of that truth in the day-to-day -day back and forth of Washington or our minute-to-minute -minute news cycles. But remember that America is a story told over a longer time horizon in fits and starts punctuated at times by hardship, but ultimately written by generations of citizens who have somehow worked together without fanfare to form a more perfect union. Over the past eight years, we've added our own new chapter to that story. Together, we've turned an economy that was shrinking and losing jobs into one that's growing and creating jobs, with poverty falling, incomes rising, and wages that have jumped faster over the past few years than at any time in the past four decades. Together, we've achieved what eluded politicians of both parties for a century. We've moved 20 million more Americans from uninsured to insured, ending the days of discrimination against up to half of Americans who have a pre-existing condition, and secured new rights and protections for everybody with health insurance. Together, we brought home most of our brave troops from Iraq and Afghanistan, took bin Laden and thousands of other terrorists off the battlefield for good, We've opened a new chapter with the people of Cuba, shut down Iran's nuclear weapons program without firing a single shot, and brought the world together around a climate agreement that could save this planet for future generations. By these measures, and many more, we have made America a better, stronger place for the generation that follows ours. We've run our leg in a long journey of progress, knowing that our work is and will always be unfinished. And that's the imperative of citizenship, the idea that with hard work, people who love their country can change it. That'll be the focus of my farewell to you this Tuesday, and I hope you'll tune in. Thanks, and have a great weekend. This marks Stan over Bolton for today. Now for a recap of our top stories. President Michel Aoun says a decree to open an extraordinary parliamentary cycle to discuss urgent draft laws, including the country's budget. Grand Mufti Sheikh Abdul Latif Darian says he has high expectations on the planned visit of President Michel Aoun to Saudi Arabia, saying it will improve ties between both countries. And at least 43 people are reported killed after a car bomb struck Syria's northwestern city of Azaz. Those are your top stories for this Saturday. I'm Linda Tamim, and I'll see you again tomorrow for more updates. Have a great weekend. عبد الحريري رئيسا لمجلس الوزراء